We are good to go. Hey everyone, um, Odilon um, from the Forma team. I work with delivery, and my main job is to build RPMs. And one of the projects that we build RPMs is Pulp. And I'm here to talk about the stage of RPM packaging on Pulp. Uh, why, what, and how? I confuse the order, but that's usually what people ask us. Why are you building Pulp? Because it's a Python project, and you can just install from PyPy, and it will work. Because Catello, that is a part of the Foreman project, consumes Pope, and we try to deliver everything inside of RPMs. And Automation Hub and Galaxy NG, they also consume RPMs from Pope Core. That's why we build RPMs from Pope. Uh, what we use to build these RPMs? We use uh, Koji, that is usually what Fedora uses upstream to build RPMs. So we're trying to stay as much close as possible to Fedora to build the RPMs. We use Jenkins and use Obo. Obo is a tool that was created by the Foreman team to automate the paths to create an RPM. In the end of the day, we build more than 500 RPMs from every two months. So if we cannot have some sort of automation, we would have the expend too much time building RPMs. So if you want to check it out, here's the CI that we use, the, the Jenkins, Foreman, the Koji, and the Obo link on GitHub. Right now, the number of packages that we have for EL8, we have 2007, 2000, hmm, let me see, and seven packages. If we count from 3.14 to 3.21, but right now we have 207 from on pop 3.21 that is built on Python 3.9. And if you see here the graph, this can show you that we went from 154 packages to 207 from POP 3.14 to POP 3.21. And 3.18 and 3.21 have the same amount of packages because the releases are close to each other because they use the same version of Python. And we share the common dependencies there. So that's why it's really close to each other. Right now, we have three Python releases that we will cover later in the talk. And one thing that we always have problems and pain when we start to package uh, RPMs for Pulp is dealing with new dependencies. I know that in Python, it's really easy to add a new dependency to a project. You just go to the requirements and put the module that you want there, and it magically appears for you. But when we talk about RPMs, we need to backtrace all the dependencies that are necessary for that package. Let me say, for instance, uh, import lib metadata. I believe import lib metadata needs at least four more packages. So if you add import lib metadata to your package or module, when we didn't have that package, we had to backtrace and do all this the dependency backwards. And that sometimes cause problems when you have a new build system in Python that is not that new because it's been here for two years, I believe. But when we talk about enterprise Linux and other distros that are meant to run in production, it's new. Two years is really new. And how we catch new dependencies? Doing branching. Branching, we call branching the part of going from one release to another on Foreman. So if we are going to upgrade from 3.18 to 3.21, we are doing a branching. We get dependencies on package updates. Sometimes we ask for a backport from a stable version of Pope that is new to an older version. But to do that backport, it's necessary to add another dependencies. So we also do backport dependencies when it's necessary. 
whoa, and my headphones connected. Hold on, we can hear you. Can you maybe he can't hear us? I think he can't hear us. Can you guys hear me? We can, yes. I can't hear Grant. If you can't hear me, your headphones are definitely broken. <laughs> Days of preparation for this to blow up right now. Testing, one, two, can you hear us? Uh, and it's that. My Let me switch to my laptop speakers, so if anyone has a question, I can hear you all. I'm sorry. I blame that on PipeWire. And I don't believe I have any headset here close to me. So yeah, there's that. Um, I, I have got a question. I'm not sure that the uh, can hear us yet. Yeah, OK. Um, you can type it into the, uh, into the chat. And uh, maybe some of the rest of us can uh, give oh, you a hand. On. The battery oh, is median, and it was not. Oh, we lost it one completely. Can you all hear me or not? Yes, we can. Can you hear us? Is the question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I blame PipeWire Bluetooth. All the, the <laughs> you're good. Control. You're good. Uh, let me get back to where I was. I see some questions here. The install pop user pick pop stall. Uh, for we don't use Appel during installations on Ansible Galaxy. Maybe the version that you tried is really, maybe it's old, but we try to avoid as much as possible Appel. If something is there, 
and we need we build ourselves because sometimes the version there is outdated because they need to keep the parity with the real release that they are supporting and sometimes we move fast and we need new versions of packages uh, i'm not able to look at the questions right now let me so if someone can ask them to me because i'm only using one screen uh, another thing that we try to do is use the guidelines from Fedora Python packaging. We try to use the same macros, the same name, the version, as they do on Fedora to at least have the installation as clean as possible and the upgrade as clean as possible. Because when we change from a Python version to another, we need to obsolete packages that might be laying there in the system to avoid having problems. And another part that how we catch dependencies, we get dependencies when we run our release pipeline. Our release pipeline is the former the get the Ansible installer. And we use the version, the option that allows us to install from RPMs. And from there we catch the dependencies that we might have missed sometimes when starting the pop process we don't have the dependency ready and we have get one error the pipeline fails we take a look at the logs see what's happened and from there we work on the new package Uh, and what about PP517? Uh, if you guys don't know, it's the proposal of enhancement for Python that introduced a better way to build Python modules. Uh, setup.py is not required anymore, but we use old versions of RHEL and sometimes Fedora that don't have this ability to not use setup.py. So what we do sometimes is we inject the setup.py config. It's not the best, the best practice, but we do that sometimes. And you can see an example on import lib metadata, line 42, that on the, of the spec file that we do inject some basic setup.py there. Uh, we need to build sometimes for EO7. Uh, Popcore 3.16 still runs on EO7. So we cannot rely in a way newer build system right now. That's why we make sometimes EO9 builds a little dumber than they should be because we still need to build the legacy that is EL7. And questions about this? And I'm good. And now let's talk about the challenge that we have when we maintain four, four releases at the same time with the different Python versions. If you guys see here, we have Python 3.6 on Popcore 3.14. We have Python 3.8 on 3.16. We have 3.9 on 3.18 and 3.9 on 3.21. And we have some things that we do here. On EL7 for Popcore 3.14, we build EL7 and EL8 RPMs. But we don't have modules metadata there. For Python 3.8, we build EL7, but it's inside of SCL, a software collections. And we do have EL8 modules there. For 3.18, we were supposed to not build anymore for EL7, but we had to. For Catello, they asked us to keep the EL7, but we did an upgrade to Python 3.9 for EL7. So we use the same bits that we had for 3.16. So 
So we have VO7 there inside of SCL of Python 3.8. We have VO8 using modules. And we have also EO9. And we work together with the Automation Hub folks to make sure that we had the EO9 bits. And if I'm not mistaken, Pope was one of the first projects to be built for EO9. Um, this was on May, I believe, that we finished building for EO9. So there's that. You guys run on EO9 without a problem. And right now, the latest release that we have is 321. That is, will be used by Catello 4.6, if I'm not mistaken. And we have EO8 modules and EO9 packages there. What is the next versions? Who knows? We know that Python 3.11 is being released right now, but I don't see it landing in Red Hat Enterprise Linux right now maybe in one year two years i don't know i don't have the schedule for that i don't even know if they have a schedule for that so we probably build keep building on python 3.9 uh, another problem that we have every time that you try to bump the python version you need to mass rebuild because you need a new build route a new apis for python and every time that we do a mass rebuild. We need to catch dependencies and make sure that the upgrade path is working. Because sometimes you have a release that ends in a one, but the and then you bump the dependency on let's say popcore 3.16. But you have the same package on popcore 3.18 and it runs in a different Python version. So you need to make sure that it's upgradable. And as I said, Pop was one of the first projects to be fully supporting EO9. And how do we test installations? Uh, every pack package that we try to update runs a scratch build. Scratch build is a way to mimic the build that uh, RPM goes through to make sure that the RPMs gets there. And we can also get dependencies there that we need to update. And how do we test? We Every time that we try to release a new version of Pope, a new package that needs to be updated, we run a pipeline with Pope installer for a particular version that we are trying to work, let's say 3.18. So it will try to run the installer with the arguments for 3.18. And if it passes, it gets green, we release the package upstream. If not, it fails, the package is not released, and we need to take a look to see what's failing. So right now we run for 3.14, 3.16, 3.15, 3.17, 3.18, and 3.21. So we basically run six, maybe six pipelines daily at least one time a day because it's scheduled to run for Pope Stolle, but if we are doing branching, we might run for 20 times that, sometimes maybe even more, and sometimes locally because we can use Forklift, that is another project that I believe you guys have Pope left, I don't remember the name, that can provision locally for you and run the Pope installer to make sure that it, it's installer for you. And what we can improve in our packaging system right now? We need a better way to identify dependencies. Because dependence, get new dependencies is sometimes painful because you need to take a look in the package that you are building, see what it inherits. Sometimes you need to go three, four modules of Python to see if it's really necessary or if it's a dependency only for development. Uh, another thing that we need to improve is branching because it's slow and oriented by failing. When I say oriented by failing is we do the basic that we know that's necessary and we try to release and it fails. So we go there and fix and try to release and it fails. And we go back. So it's at least 
four to five times, you need to go back and see what's failing to make sure that it's, it's stable. At least we have the installer that handles some part of the, the automation for us. And another thing that we can do in the future, it's having a way that when a new pop bit is published to PyPy, we can trigger something to update the RPM automatically. And we just do the review and see if it needs to be manually intervening or not. And you have a new pulp component that you, you want to package and you don't know how to start. You can reach me on pulp dev or create one issue at GitHub, the foreman pulp core packaging. And we are, we will be happy to help you and show you how to build an RPM package for Pulp. Any questions? Please don't be afraid. So I think you said that on EL9, there's no module needed. I mean, EL9 has fewer modules, but still. We don't have modules yet on EL9. I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe modules is yet to come. Like, gotcha. gotcha. I don't know the release. Mm -hmm. Do you run any functional tests on the build packages, or do you rely on the uh, setup.py to provide the right dependencies and all the right versions? We use Py to RPM. I believe this is the the name that the project. So it looks at the PyPy project and it writes a spec file for you. So every upgrade that we does, we run that and see the differences. The problem is that sometimes it's not a dependency that is necessary to run. Let's say it's only a test dependency for the module. And we don't need that because we don't want to use the module. We don't want to test functionalities of the module itself. So we try to be as close as possible to only have the, the necessary dependencies in the tree that we have of packages. It's by by to RPM. Thanks, Mike. OK, thank you. And this one does not support the new way of building Python modules with that setup.py. That's another one that it's been worked, but it's not fully stable yet. So we still rely on setup.py, even if the pack, package or module don't have setup.py. Any other questions, folks? All right, Odalon, thank you very much. That was great. Uh, Daniel, let's stop recording. Oh, I have one more question.